Another thing I've been talking about a lot, and people are like, Dave, why do you beat the dead horse so much? Why do you say the same thing over and over? Well, I've been receiving a ton of emails asking me about this 230 EMA system that I've been talking about. So I'm going to walk you through it one more time, and then maybe we'll find a couple of live examples or at least recent examples so you can see where it played out. Now, I just randomly grabbed this one, but I knew it was a good chart because I'm long and I already have profits. But you're just looking for two bars of Landry Light, okay? That's one bar there, and Landry Light is just the low is greater than the EMA. In this case, I'm using the 30 EMA, okay? So that's one. That's two. You would enter above the two bar high, oops, which would be somewhere here, plus a little wiggle room, maybe about right there would be an entry. And, you know, I'm just looking at this on the fly, and then maybe a stop at the 30 EMA or maybe a little bit below it. So you may have scratched out on that trade, okay? If you do, so what? Like a bus, another one will come along again. Bar one, low greater than the EMA. Bar two, low greater than the EMA, enter above this high, maybe a little wiggle room. So you may have gotten in here or here. And then again, if you give it a little room, maybe below that 30 EMA when it's fairly close like that, you might just catch one taken off. Now, say you got stopped out twice in a row. It happens, spelled a silent SH. Then bar one right here. Bar two, right here, lows above the moving average, Landry light as we now call it. Enter somewhere above this high with a little wiggle room, you would have got in way up here. Now, I know it's kind of hard to take that leap of faith and buy these things when they're going up, but here's what I'm looking for. And I probably bought it somewhere in there. Here's what I'm looking for. I'm just looking for a 20% run higher, and then I'm out. I've got a limit order, okay? But I'm also going to take my stop and move it to let's say my stops down here, I'll move it to break even. So the worst I could do, provided it's not a complete scam coin, right, is break even on the remainder. And also, as I said earlier, once I'm up 20%, I'll take a little piece of this coin, whatever, whatever it is, not much, okay, you know, 50 bucks or whatever, and just stick it off into that little account. And to my surprise, that's growing pretty quick. Now these things are open 365 days a year. So let's say you hit two a day at 50 bucks each while well, you're peeling off $36,000 a year. And, and, you know, I would like to do four a day, which would be $200 at 50 bucks each. And what's that? That's $70,000. Now, it doesn't always happen, but that would be pretty nice. One reason I took this trade other than it was going up was I figured it'd be a good time to show you in a near live situation okay and it's actually i'm actually losing money so far in a trade so let's not get too excited but right here you have bar one right here you have bar two okay so the entry would have been right there and actually because of everything going on today i just noticed this a little while ago and sometimes it's a little hard to buy way up here because you might be buying that exact tick and looks like so far i might have gotten the exact tick but so what we'll see what happens so as far as systems Right now, I am doing pullbacks to the 30 EMA. I'm also just a lot of times, again, as I've been preaching for the last several weeks, buying the ones that are going up. So like right now, if I hit percentage change here, these are all the negative ones, obviously, you hit percent again. Now, when my list was much smaller with the other exchanges that I've been using, if I saw a bunch of red in that, let's say the red started about right here, went all the way down, I wouldn't even bother going after them. But now there's so many coins in this particular exchange, then usually you can almost always find something. So here's one that went straight up. I don't know if I played this one. And when you see these long tails like this, it, they're usually pretty thin. So you need to be careful. And this is a while, while less. I'm still learning. The great thing is everything I teach and preach about trading works in these things and it's a very very efficient market and i really have nothing to gain by by teaching you how to train these trade these shit coins i don't have a service or anything else but what i hope is that you might not you guys because i know you guys are already uh, all in on on the trend following and everything else but maybe i my hope is to show you that the trend following can work regardless of the market once again, let me just show you one more time because somebody's going to ask, and I've got to remember this video is out there and shoot them to this video. Okay, I don't know if this is Landry Light like there, but let's just assume this bar is for sure. This bar here for sure. Bar one, bar two. Where do we enter? Above the two bar high. So your entry would have been right there. Okay, right on this bar here. And initially, you're probably saying, boy, this sucks, right? And then 
luckily it took off pretty nicely uh, from a buck and a half to nine dollars a share if that doesn't get you excited i don't know what will and i know i'm a nerd with all this and believe me i don't have a, a ton of money in here and i, I like the, the gentleman i was talking about earlier who um who lost money in mount gox i said you know i'm torn between parlaying a small account and throwing a lot more money at this stuff and i think i'm just going to keep parlaying that small account and maybe maybe peel off a little bit every now and then and put it into a coinbase account or someplace where i think it might be a little bit safer and i make a little air quotes on that too so buyer beware on all this stuff don't don't come crying to me but right now the reason i've shown you this and again i have nothing to gain right probably everything to lose if if a lot of this stuff goes to zero and all of a sudden you're mad at me but the reason i'm excited the reason i'm showing it to you is because technical analysis works here technical analysis works incredibly well in an inefficient market and technical analysis works incredibly well. And I'm just talking about buying stuff that goes up pretty much when I say technical analysis, but the 230 EMA and stuff like that works too, pullbacks, et cetera. But everything works better with Prim. Now, the other thing I wanna show you real quick too that I've been noticing is if you didn't know anything about trading and you said, okay, well, I'm not gonna buy any of these shit coins as long as they're below the 30 EMA. And you're gonna be shocked at how many of them just go below 30 EMA and never rise up. Let's see if we can find something interesting. So this is one I'm still long, okay? Got in here, oh, actually got in here, sold half here, stop is right here. Magically, it didn't hit it, so far so good. Knock on wood. Let's just see if we can find something real quick and then on the downside, I'll show you what how ugly it looks just by following that 30 EMA. And again, here's a testament for money management, right? I got in here, got out here, that's 20%, rolled it up, trailed the stop, don't know where I stopped out, but I got a little bit out of it and then it came right back in. Get on, get a ride, and GTFO. Let's see if we can find something here. But you kind of get the idea. And, and basically, you just want to get on the ones that are hot. I mean, the only thing that's killing me lately and, and why I want to throw more money at it is a lot of times I'll run out of slots, so to speak. So if you take a look at, again, all the ones that I'm free rolling on, I'm pretty much, as the, uh, remember that YouTube drive, it was all filled up. I'm pretty much filled up as far as positions. <laughs> You didn't give me my extra McRib. She said, you don't look like you need an extra McRib. <laughs> and I said, excuse me, bitch. <laughs> anyway, so I think I'm all filled up for the most part. Now, let me just show you one more thing real quick. Like I said earlier, you know, secret to trading is staying out of crappy markets, okay? So let's just see. Notice as we go through a lot of these ones that are that are kind of imploding, maybe, um, not going to be vindicated on this because some of them look good anyway the point i'm trying to make is if you pay attention to that 30 ema there we go there's one notice that this thing never really rallied but it also never really went above its 30 ema so i think that is something that could help keep you out of trouble that's a sheep thing everybody's getting excited about i bought this thing way back here parlayed it into actual money <laughs> and then stopped out recently and bought a HODL shirt and kind of a joke, but looks like I had to bail out on it. Anyway, again, 30 EMA, something good to look at, might keep you out of trouble. This is one I was in, got stopped out, but it's a really deep retracement. This thing might take off again. And as I said earlier, you might look to play some more traditional things such as pullbacks to the 30 EMA, if, it, if, if they pull back that far, in some cases they won't, maybe the 20 EMA. So she, by the way, is she again, you can see it's pulled back to the 30 EMA, you know, maybe enter somewhere around here where I have this alert, might be a good place to enter. That's pretty much all I've been doing, just to, just to trend find more on stuff, playing some pullbacks here and there. One thing I really like is, let's say this thing pulls back a little further, and then begins to rally, has a sharp rally, so it comes up high in the list. So I'm playing the reversion to the mean move, plus I'm playing the strongest one on a relative strength basis. And again, all the technical analysis 
works really, really well because it's a very emotional market. And, and in fact, technical analysis really works its best or pretty much only works in, in a very emotional market. And these things trade purely on emotions. Another thing I was thinking about is what Tom McClellan once said. He talked about how you buy a stock, you're forming a relationship between you and the company, and you hope the company does good things, and the company normally does good things. A couple of scam companies out there. I can think of a few from the dot-com era, and then obviously Squid Coin, Squid Scam was a scam. But for the most part, the company, staying on stocks, has your best interest in mind. A bigger concern, as Tom McClellan was explaining to us at a meeting in New Orleans, American Association of Professional Technical Analysts, he said that your bigger concern is the people who bought the stock prior to you, and he went on to say, and those people will screw you. So we're trading traders, not markets. Again, you know, old guys rule. I really think old guys rule in this particular case. I think we have a chance to make a lot of money while the young guys are going to flounder a little bit because they're trying to buy as these things go down. They're trying to buy as cheap as possible. They're a little afraid to buy things that are going up, and they're certainly not going to spend the time to learn simple technical analysis and follow a system like the 230 or something like that. And they're also not going to use proper money management. Now, if you're a young guy and you want to do all that, that's fantastic. I have all that on the back of the website, soft sale, and then become a gold member, learn about all these things, and then you could trade stocks, and then you could trade crypto, and then down the road, whatever the next big exciting bubble will be, we don't know, you'll be ready for that.